guys, Mac with the Air Circle, and today I want to have a bit of a different show. So lately we've sort of had a quite a go at Forge World and the last chance to buy because it is a pretty dick move on their behalf. Now, people like to turn around and tell us, oh, you're just salty, you're right 5% of the time, wrong 95% of the time, that kind of thing. I get those comments a lot, usually from the same couple of very vocal people. But, um... I think we're actually pretty positive in general, and been trying to positively slant our videos lately, um, especially doing like Battles of the Horus Heresy, that kind of thing, like how the hell can that be negative? You know, those are the sort of videos I want to put out. But the thing is, whenever I feel that the company's doing something wrong by the people who've invested so much money into their products, well, that's when we get on our high horse here and start losing our shit. And even then, a lot of the ranting is... Not scripted, but more dramatic than it would have to be in real life. In real life, I'd mostly just shake my head and say, that's not a great idea. But you're trying to make a show, you're trying to make it entertaining, you're going to swear a lot more. So, that said, I do swear a lot anyway, I guess. Anyway, today I want to talk about some of my favourite sculpts in the Horus Heresy, because the Horus Heresy is not going away. They are continuing to support it, they are looking after it. The thing is, it's just kits are being cancelled right now for whatever reason um, I think there is someone higher up the food chain who doesn't quite understand how different kits interact with one another and they're the ones making the calls um, they don't understand that you know if you get rid of terminator weapons then you can't arm your Justerian terminators for example or if you get rid of all the shoulder mounted heavy weapons why are you keeping the mark 3 and mark 4 heavy weapon teams that use them like, obviously, there's a disconnect there where things don't make sense. But I don't want to focus on that, um, even if I am touching on the subject. I want to talk about some of my favourite kits they've put out, where they've just absolutely nailed it and what I love about them. So, without any further ado, let's do that. So, first pick on my list is the Emperor's Children Phoenix Terminators. These are some of the most gorgeous models ever built by Games Workshop. Just, that's it. It is what it is. They are absolutely gorgeous. They've got intricate gold trim. They have the Aquila. They've got, the, they got all the eagles in all the right places, I guess is what I'm getting at. Um, where a lot of 40k miniatures seem to have skulls and Aquilas and that kind of thing just randomly placed on them. For some reason, the positioning on these guys with the little wings on the forearms and the single Palatine Aquila on the shoulder, it just looks perfect. And the large jewels, or big round gemstones in the chest um, and on the shoulders, they just complement it perfectly. There is nothing negative that I can say about these kits. Um, even better than the Custodes plastics. Their weapons, the Phoenix Spears, are meant to be based on the Custode helmet, uh, helmets. And, I mean, you look at these spears and compare them to the Custodes spears, and these look much slimmer, more graceful, um, a generally more attractive sculpt in my opinion so yeah full props to the Empress children they're one of my favorite kits the Phoenix Terminators next we have the Wordbearers Legion Gal Vorbach these ones are another one that just whenever you'd play possessed in the past it was always some lame upgrade kit when they first had possessed early on or they had their own kit, but it was really bizarrely proportioned. It was just regular marines with like a big tentacle arm or a uh, bestial face. This kind of thing is just like where they've gone and taken it to the absolute extremes. They're like, yeah, look, rather than trying to make a multi-pose squad where everything just looks a bit meh, let's just make a huge squad of guys that are terminator sized and they're all going to be unique and individual and they're all going to look fantastic and boy did they nail it these are what I imagine when I imagine possessed they're all weird, they're all different they're like marines that have supersized they're bursting out of their armor they're growing all these weird limbs and they, they're just chaotic in every sense of the word this is what a possessed should look like it shouldn't look like a regular space marine with a tentacle arm these are bigger, they're badder, their armor is cracked open. Um, just, yeah, everything about them is just perfect. And it's great to see. Next, the Imperial Fists Legion Templar Brethren. 
yeah, this is the Black Templars analog in 30k, and they look spectacular. The Solrite Gauntlet looks great uh, in person, and of course you've got these awesome little combat shields. You have these swords, which actually have sort of a Templar cross built into the uh, hilt. Oh, it's actually built into the cross guard of the hilt. Uh, you also get Archaeotech Pistol, little Legion Vexillias. They come with these upgraded torsos and helmets and just yeah, another really fantastic looking kit that really embodies the spirit of that Legion. And you can sort of see where they're going to go um, in future. Like, yeah, I could see an army of these guys. I really could. And it would probably look really great in black, maybe with white. Hmm, they're two colours that would go really well together. Yet another one that really captured the look of the Legion, the Iron Hands Legion Mark III Tactical Squad. Boy, did they knock it out of the park with this one. And the beauty of it is, is you only need to buy one or two of this kit and just spread it out amongst your tactical squads. Just to show that some guys have more bionics than others, some guys have really gone to town and customised their armour, some haven't. You know, you can have a bit of a play around with it, but... Everything is mechanical. It's like they've got rid of that Roman theme, especially on like the Vexilia on the Sergeants, for example. Instead of the Vexilia being this sort of laurel, olive wreaths, and that kind of thing around the park, instead it's a giant cogwheel with servo skulls hanging off it. It's it's grim dark, but it's not grim derp, in my opinion. They've got chain mail and things like that that you wouldn't expect to see in the 30th millennium, but it works. Uh, as well as bionics and all this random tubing and cabling coming out of them. Like some guys have robo legs, like the guy in the very back. Uh, others have robo arms and yeah, just embodies the spirit of the Legion. And to an even further degree, the Iron Hands of Medusa and Immortals also embody the Legion. This is a squad that is so customised and so imposing I have used them for command squads for my Iron Warriors and also for Iron Hands. Because again, you just remove that combat shield, swap out the bolt gun perhaps for something else, or keep the bolt gun, it doesn't really matter, it's a perfectly good weapon in 30k. And you know, with this squad, that they've got all this little cog trim on the armor, what of robotic parts, and again, just you look at them and you're like, they're Iron Hands. And you contrast that with like the Games Workshop Iron Hands upgrade kits and oh man, does this knock it out of the park. So great sculpt. Another really, really awesome miniature, the Leviathan Siege Dreadnought. Whilst I have some misgivings about the rules, um, is it as points efficient as two Contempt of Dreadnoughts or two Contempt of Cortices, which would also cost the same sort of points? Probably not, but it's so damn cool anyway, who gives a shit, right? <laughs> um, yeah, wow, what's not to love about this thing? Uh, great assault beast. Maybe not as good a DACA beast. It can pump out the DACA, but it's very short-ranged with it. But it just looks great no matter which way you kick this thing out. And if you remove the gameplay aspect to it altogether, this model is perfect. When you think of a big, heavy lumbering dreadnought, this is what I think of. That Redemptor in 40k for the Primaris Marines is shit compared to this. And in fact, that Redemptor isn't terrible, it's just, this is so damn good. Another one that captures the look of their Legion is the Alpha Legion Headhunter Kill Teams. They have the upgraded scaled torsos, um, those sort of fanged Hydra helmets where there's like a snout built into the top of the helmet crest and then there's of course fangs on the face almost biting around the uh, wearer's head and I mean the over under bolt guns what a fantastic idea um, I don't know if this was the first time we'd ever seen it on these kits I believe it was but yeah boy fantastic even down to the little details like the little plate of armor with the shroud bombs and uh, grenades, knives, that kind of thing that glues onto the leg plate. Just little details like that that really make something stand out. And yeah, knocked it out of the park. Of course, no list would be complete without discussing the Sycorans. A very, very heresy tank. This isn't an uh, reimagining of the uh, rogue trader 
sort of tanks like the rhinos and land raiders are these are specifically 30k they just have all the shapes you associate with the astartes they're, they're bigger they look sleeker despite the fact that they've got that same all-round track design they all have unique and interesting weapon loadouts even if some again in game are less effective than others but it doesn't matter when they look so damn cool on top of that, my favourite Sigrand variant of all, the Venator. I love the Venator. And in fact, a part of me wants to convert up the Sigrand Punisher. That's the one with the giant minigun you see in this picture. I want to kind of magnetise the gun, main gun on a Venator and swap it to a Punisher cannon occasionally. Have a big, long Gatling gun coming out the hole like an A-10 Warthog with tracks. So, yeah, just one of those neat little things. Just everything about this looks cool. This is the Stug, or the Yag Panther, to our regular mainline battle tanks. And yeah, looks beautiful. Now a couple right after my own heart. And this is actually one I don't own. I actually don't own any segment Terminators yet. Um, every time I've thought about buying them, something else has come up that's more important. So don't have them but geez do these ones really suit the look of the legion just the kopesh blades look perfectly scaled they're the right proportions a kopesh blade can be made it can be made to look really bad um the 40k scarab occult terminators uh kopesh blades do not look very good all right let's just get that out of the way they've got this big serrated edge and they're really chunky looking no these ones look like some sort of archaic bronze weapon. They've got this long handle on them, which again changes their proportions, and that just fat tip, all the different chamfers and angles all on the edge of the blade, and just, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect, and it's the one thing that really stands out for Thousand Sun. Sally had got no rules, um, but the Kopesh blade. It looks very Thousand Suns, it's very original, and this is the best sculpted iteration of the Kopesh I've ever seen on the tabletop. That is, of course, until you get to the Thousand Suns Legion Praetor, who is, I think everyone can agree, one of the best Legion Praetor sculpts that's out there. Um, compare this with the Iron Hands Forge Father or the upcoming Alpha Legion Praetors. The Space Wolf Praetor especially comes off badly next to this guy. This is just one of those beautiful sculpts with, again, the perfectly proportioned Kopesh blade. He has a nice pose, good cloak, lots of detail, but it's not overpowering. He's about as detailed as you want him to be. And lastly, something else I also think they've nailed. Sons of Horus Legion Command Squad, which has Malachus the Twisted. That's the guy with the bald head and a standard bearer. And of course you can convert the two like I've done for one of my mates where I've put the banner onto uh, Malakurst. That way he can actually, because he has a banner in the rules, you can upgrade him with and blah blah blah. Not the point. The point is, these are beautiful miniatures. The spikes on the armor, the chains, the icons, the little tokens hanging off them, it's all so damn perfect. When I think Sons of Horus, this is the first thing that comes to mind, and then probably the Justerian Terminators come second to mind. But yeah, these are just absolutely perfect. I can't gush more over these miniatures. All the miniatures I've showed today are models that just perfectly define the factions that they're a part of. And there's plenty more that look great as well, like both the Salamander Specialist Units, the Fire Drakes, um, the Pyro Class, both look fantastic. Um, Ultramarines, uh, Invictory, Suzerian, uh, another one that looks really great for their Legion. And uh, the Ashen Circle for the Word Bearers, another fantastic looking unit. So these units are out there. The Heresy is not dying. The removal of a whole bunch of cosmetic upgrades and the occasional weapon isn't going to kill the Heresy. It's still getting support, but you got to remember, Forge World is massively, massively undermanned for the amount of work they've got to put out because there's a big demand for the specialist games. Not just being put on them by the fans, but by Games Workshop as well, the parent company. We want this, this, and this in this time frame. 
and we know that Angelius, the next heresy book, isn't coming till the very end of the year. So how much can we realistically expect them to work on until then? I'm sure all hands are on deck right now sorting out the last of Titanicus' releases before that comes out in the next month or so. So you've got to keep all this in mind. Um, heresy is not dying. That's my big stressed point. Like I've just got to say it again. It's not dying. So don't get depressed and say, oh, I'm not going to collect it now. No, no, just... Look, if, if you really want to stock up on things, right? Don't stock up on weapons, any of that kind of thing. Get your unit's elite weapons, any upgrade sets that you think might be viable, and especially, this is the one I have to stress the most, get yourself like four decal sheets for your legion. Even if you don't use them down the line, you can always sell them on, people will always pay retail price for them. But those decal sets will be your life, but trust me, um, people who got Soul Rogzilla and don't have four of those sheets right now are absolutely spewing because they're out of production. So, keep it in mind, they're, they're something, you know, they're, they're not that expensive. I mean, you get a full A4 transfer sheet, you can put it aside, just put them in a Ziploc bag, so it's airtight, it's not going to ruin them over time, and pop them in a drawer. I have a full drawer full of decal sheets from Forward World and Games Workshop. And whenever I need one, I can just open that up, and you'd be surprised what's in there. I have decals that go back to, like, the 90s in that drawer. Some of them are a bit worse for wear, but, mm, you know... Um, I've got other decal sheets in there, like German uh, Panzer decal sheets. I have a whole bunch of SS decal sheets, uh, complete with swastika Nazi flags on them. Can't really use those on Games Workshop models, but then again, maybe I could. Maybe some SS Adonath Deepkin would be on the menu, wouldn't that be great? But, you know, they're not going to go to waste. If you are cleaning out your drawers and you say, oh, look, you know, I, I bought four Iron Hands decal sheets and Iron Hands aren't for me anymore. Go on Facebook, go on Buy Swap Sell, put them up there and say, you know, just asking regular retail price. And people will buy them. Especially if you're in their country, because they're like, oh, well, you know, if I buy from this guy, I'll get them in a couple of days. If I buy them from Forge World, I could be waiting, waiting a couple of weeks for the shipping. So keep that in mind. Anyway, back with our circle. Hope you all enjoy the episode because we're so negative on this channel, just so so negative. It's not like we put out like 15 positive episodes and only four negative ones in the last month. No, 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 we're all negative, guys. Anyway, have a salty time and I'll catch you all later.